Hello again, and now we are going to talk about the waste. Although circular economy is a management of resources, now it's a little bit uh, too late to only focus on them, so we also have to think what to do with our waste, which we already have. And this uh, panel, this session will be dedicated to this topic. And firstly, there will be intro speech about how to build a circular waste management system from Ton van der Giesen, CEO of Van Verven Plastic Recycling Company from Holland. And then uh, it will be followed by the panel discussion uh, of uh, experts uh, in a field of uh, waste management, where Łukasz Sosnowski will be moderator from uh, Foundation Pro Carton. Uh, and panelists will be Kamir Milowski, Public Affairs and Sustainable Senior Manager Grupa Żywiec, Anna Sapota, Tomra Systems, Kazimierz Borkowski, Plastics Europe Polska, Jakub Tyczkowski, Recopol, Raven Sharon, uh, Claritel, oraz Paulina Kaczmarek, Sustainable Development Manager Danon. So please, now I give a floor to Ton and he will give you introductory presentation. Thank you very much for the introduction. Hopefully the connection is okay and working well. And as you can see, um, you have to, de to do more than only being a CEO of a plastic recycling company to achieve your goals. But I will tell you more about it. What you see here is our plastic recycling factory in Poland. And of course, we are very proud to have that over there. But it was not easy to achieve a circular business model for plastic recycling. When we started 15 years ago, we didn't know all kinds of hurdles. And I think that was very good because otherwise, when we all know them before, I think we never start this kind of activity. And I, I will tell you why. The first problem was we are getting in mixed plastics Polish consumer mixed plastics from municipalities, bulky household waste, and also material from sorting installation for building and, demo and demolition waste. And when it's coming in, that it uh, has a content of 25 different types of plastic. And of course, you have to sort them all out per type, and uh, sometimes also per color, to have at the end a good secondary raw material. And it took us four years to know exactly how to do it, how to sort, how to make them clean and make them efficient for the plastic industry. And at that moment, when we wanted to sell our products, 10 years ago, it is 2010 at that moment, when we think about circularity, the plastic industry in Europe, no, they didn't want to have um, this kind of material. We don't put waste in our products. That was their answer. And it took us two years to convince some of them that it can be a good replacement for primary material. And it, at the moment they uh, discovered that it could be replaced, then they asked for more material but because of, wow, we can use that very well. And can you bring more and more? But we can only bring more when there is enough plastic waste brought to our location. And we had at that moment two problems. The first one was incineration in the Netherlands was much cheaper. And also you can think about landfilling in other countries is much cheaper than bring this material to a plastic recycling company. And another one, we also was a big competitor for us, was the Chinese trader. At the moment, um, they bought all the material in Western Europe and sent it over to China because it was uh, much uh, cheaper to recycle uh, the material over there. Think about the uh, labor costs, but also the transport was very cheap. It was cheaper to bring a container from Rotterdam to Shanghai than drive it by truck to Munich. And then what happened in 2017? That was great. I was dreaming about that for many, many years. Chinese borders were closed for waste from all over the world, including waste from Europe. And at that moment, we decided to invest because then the front side, bringing in plastic waste to our locations, wasn't 
the problem anymore. So we build up in several countries our recycling facilities. It started in the Netherlands, then in Belgium, in the UK, in Ireland, in Sweden, and also the opening of our last beautiful location in Poland. And we have a capacity of 115 million kilograms of recycled every year. We thought we are ready for the future. And then in the beginning of this year, something happened. I think nobody has thought about it. And that is that has to do with the plastic um, uh, by made from oil. The oil prices went down. They even got below zero for a certain amount. Who could predict that that will happen uh, one year ago? And of course, you recognize maybe the the drawings uh, from Putin and, and the president of uh, America, Trump, and Saudi Arabia. They are, all have their own strategy to look to the oil. And with those low oil prices, also the primary prices for plastic went down with more than 30%. And for a recycling company, nothing changed. Eh? The cost still the same. So how can we survive? The way we did it was um, to lower down our capacity with 50% and build up a lot of stock and look what we can do in the nearby future. And also, we are talking with politics in national or national level or European level, because I think at the end, there will be two solutions that will help to bring this kind of activities in a more stable, sustainable environment. And one of them is recycled content. When there is a recycled content obligation, everybody has to use recycled in their products, then there is no competition anymore with the oil price, but only recycling companies can compete between um, each other about volumes, price and qualities. And that should be, of course, much better. But on the other hand, at the moment this will happen, I think there is no risk left enough. So we, have, we also have to do something on the other side, the input side of the plastic recycling country. And with a ban on incineration or landfilling, they will bring the material to a recycling company. And when this both elements will uh, take place, I think then we have a sustainable and um, stable business model for the coming years. How to achieve such kind of new legislations? And that's one of my other tasks. I think 30, 40% of my time uh, as a CEO, I am also busy with lobbying, lobbying in branch organizations like Plastic Recycling Europe or Polyolefin Circular Economy Platform, where I am the vice chair together with the uh, branch organizations uh, for primary uh, plastics. We are talking about future. And we signed green deals to have an end of waste status on national levels. Because after when we make our uh, recyclet, it is still waste. And it depends on the country when the, where there is an end of waste uh, status or where there is still a waste status. And when it is waste, a plastic producer doesn't have a waste permit, so we can't use our recyclet in his products. So there are a lot of borders you have to come over, and you cannot do that alone. You need organizations, branch organizations for that, but also you need politicians to reach, at the end, those goals. What will be the future? And when we think about um, 2050, um, the volume we expect on new plastic products will triple. So we are going from 350 million tons to 1 billion tons every year. Is there enough recyclet to make this in combination? No, of course, there is not enough recyclet. Then the demand is growing and a lot of it is used in products with a long lifetime. There is no recycled enough to make everything what we want to buy at that moment from recycled material. So it is not the only solution, recycling, but I think it's a very important one. And on the other hand, who will, who will be at the end our biggest uh, customer? 
the end user. And I think that that will be the primary industry. They are going to absorb a lot of this recyclate into their uh, primary material, like also in fuel. Biodiesel is part of the total diesel. And that will be, I think, also the future for plastics. And when it, all this is uh, happening, then I think there is a well-known road to sustainability. Thank you for your attention. Ja nazywam się Łukasz Sosnowski, jestem prezesem Fundacji Prokarton i będę miał przyjemność poprowadzić panel pod tytułem Budowanie cyrkularnego systemu gospodarowania odpadami. Chciałbym przedstawić Państwu naszych panelistów, dr Kazimierz Borkowski, dr Kazimierz Borkowski, managing director Plastics Europe Polska. Po polsku, po polsku. Pani Paulina Kaczmarek. Ja nie wiem co Ruben, Ruben ja po polsku. A po polsku, ma być po polsku. Dzień dobry, bardzo mi miło. Pan Kamil Mirowski, Public Affairs and Sustainability Center, Grupa Żywiec. Pani Anna Sapota, Vice President Governmental Affairs Tomra Systems. Dzień dobry. Pan Ruven Sharon, Corporate Development Officer Claritel. Dzień dobry, Pani Ruven, czy się słyszymy? Dzień dobry, tak, ja słyszę. Dzień dobry. I pan Jakub Tyczkowski, prezes organizacji odzysku opakowań Rekopol. Jakub Dzień Tyczkowski, Dzień dobry. CEO Bardzo Rekopol. miło, witam wszystkich państwa. Sześciu panelistów, temat bardzo ciekawy, dotyczący budowania cyrkularnego modelu gospodarki odpadami. Kiedy patrzymy na, na gospodarkę odpadami, to jest tylko jeden z elementów całego circular economy, całego cyklu życia produktu. Kiedy patrzę na, na te opakowania, którymi się zajmujemy w Fundacji Prokarton, czyli kartonami do płynnej żywności, kartonami na mleko, czy kartonami na na soki, to widzę, jak te opakowania oczywiście współistnieją na różnych etapach cyklu życia produktu, w jaki sposób jak nasi paneliści I would like to know how our panelists in the context of circular economy ten temat w jaki sposób inne look at the subject how different types of packaging different products odnajdują się w circular economy w jaki sposób can be part of circular economy how different na ten uh, life cycle stages influence uh, waste management. And I would like to turn to Jakub Tyczkowski first with the question. Widzi pan etap How do you see the waste management stage uh, in the circular economy uh, when it's just one of the elements of the product life cycle? Until recently we had this uh, trend to have two different points of view as business or consumers or uh, the general public. You would see, on the one hand, the part related to raw materials, packaging, and then you had a different part of uh, circular economy related to waste. You buy something, you throw it away, you manufacture, you sell, and then it becomes waste. But I think that very often we were not seeing that these two halves uh, should connect at some point in time. Our point of view focused on the two halves separately and it has to change. 
we have to have uh, a full circle, the full loop. But closing the loop is complicated uh, for now because uh, some types of packaging, that's what I can talk about, some t forms of packaging cannot be recirculated forever. Glass, yes, we can collect glass uh, as waste, recycle it uh, and produce new uh, packagings, uh, bottles or jars. You can refill uh, and reuse it. Glass can recirculate. Uh, metals are also a great example of uh, a recyclable uh, raw material. With plastics, uh, this is something that we are talking about, the situation with plastics is completely different because a given plastic uh, can be used two or three times and then the granulate will not be good enough to produce new uh, packaging in particular uh, packaging uh, because uh, sometimes uh, of uh, packaging can be recycled others not really the uh, uh, plastics that come into contact with uh, food cannot be recycled uh, there's a mass uh, of uh, packaging that cannot be reused uh, you need different applications so you have to get out of uh, the loop you need primary uh, resources uh, first. Uh, you produce uh, the packaging and then you can't really reuse it. So it changes the uh, image of the loop where you have uh, raw materials and waste. Um, and this change of uh, perspective is uh, currently happening. It's going to take years in terms of a new approach of business representing both halves of the loop. We also need new regulatory approach uh, for the loop to be closed because you need a lot of uh, regulatory change in the EU and in Poland specifically. Uh, you need to change the uh, econ economy of the entire system because some things right now are not profitable. For them to become profitable, you need to change regulation. And that's how we have to uh, see uh, what's happening. We are using more and more packaging, so we need to urgently adopt uh, a new perspective. I will talk about regulation later in the second part of our panel, because uh, it is a particularly relevant uh, topic. Right now I would like to come back, however, to how the current uh, uh, operations of our panelists uh, and waste management is carried out and how it impacts other uh, stages of the life cycle and how these other stages impact the waste management uh, stage. Now I'd like to turn to Kazimierz Borkowski from Plastics Europe Polska. Uh, Jakub mentioned plastics. This is something that you are dealing with. What is your approach to the subject? Right, let me just add that plastics, uh, well, it's not just plastic uh, uh, itself. Uh, we are using all sorts of polymers, so it's more than just so-called plastics. It's polymers that uh, fulfill specific requirements in order to be an effective packaging that will extend the uh, shelf life of a product. And that's the difference uh, with uh, other uh, types of packaging. Metal packaging uh, is just one or two types, aluminum or steel. In uh, glass, that you may have uh, more types of glass, but in general, you could say that all the other materials are relatively homogeneous. From the biodiversity, the, 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 sorry, the diversity of uh, polymers, you can build all sorts of uh, material for any application. But there are also the negatives uh, to this approach uh, when you're dealing with waste. Your are dealing not with uh, just one plastic, you have a variety of various materials, uh, various polymers, which need to be separated in order to be recycled. And 
here we arrive at a situation where we as uh, the plastics uh, industry for around a dozen years uh, we have been trying to we have been encouraging uh, people to uh, change the way uh, they use plastics. Plastics are inexpensive, but they are valuable nevertheless, and they need to be reused rather than thrown away. I cannot uh, step away from legislation here because right now legislation shapes the future uh, these days, uh, the future of the plastics industry. So I have to talk about circular economy uh, package uh, and the entire philosophy that uh, has been adopted uh, a few years uh, back uh, at EU level. Since 2018, we've had individual directives uh, that implement the principles of circular economy. With regard to plastics, you have the plastic strategy. In the strategy, there are critical areas related to the use of plastics. I'm talking about it because this influences uh, our ongoing operations uh, in my industry. We see a quick reaction of uh, the industry which is trying to adapt to the new reality. For example, we were um, said uh, to uh, not recycle enough. So uh, many centers started uh, working on uh, redesigning uh, packaging. This co-design approach uh, means that new um, uh, wrapping um, is being developed uh, to increase uh, the recyclability of uh, wrapping plastic. The industry is also promoting the use of multiple use plastics wherever uh, possible. Plastics uh, are very lasting uh, types of uh, materials. Uh, they can be reused many times, particularly in uh, the construction industry where the durability of the materials uh, goes beyond 50 years. The industry, as I indicated, uh, is uh, on the innovative uh, track. We have new uh, projects in line with uh, the industry's uh, new approach to uh, designing packaging. We're looking for new resources as well renewable uh, resources where possible or uh, we're going back to the uh, problem of waste. We're also looking at the reuse uh, of uh, waste uh, materials to produce uh, plastics. We have the uh, traditional uh, mechanical recycling. There are some limits to it. There is also the issue of chemical recycling, where we're going to separate uh, the polymers uh, and turn them into simple uh, uh, substances or monomers, which could be used uh, at a factory to uh, produce new plastic. Very important topics, innovation, the quality of uh, recyclable materials. These are one of the uh, cornerstones of circular economy. Thank you very much uh, for uh, your presentation um, on your operations. Now I have uh, a question for Anna Sapota from uh, Tombra Systems. In your operations, innovation and the quality of materials uh, are uh, key. Right. Thank you very much. Tomra is a supplier of uh, technology uh, that involves uh, optical sensors. If we are talking about circular economy, this technology has uh, all sorts of applications. Now, talking about waste specifically, machines uh, 
for uh, the automatic uh, collection of uh, uh, drink uh, bottles or sorting machines have two axes, the collection and sorting of waste. And here we have a lot of issues. On the one hand, you have technological issues. How can technology address specific problems? How to collect clean streams uh, of waste? On the other hand, you also have uh, technology as an enabler. Certain things that were not possible 15 years ago are becoming possible. In some places in Europe, uh, for example in Norway, there are solutions uh, which used to be uh, obvious uh, until recently, a selective uh, collection of waste in five fractions. Now it's becoming obsolete. Uh, it uh, turns out that it's uh, more uh, uh, sensible to collect less fractions and then sort uh, waste automatically. These are things that uh, are changing continuously. This is also the challenge related to circular economy. The solutions that you adopt today uh, as innovative uh, tomorrow may turn out to be uh, a standard and later they will be replaced by something else. So it's also a question about business models uh, that you um, uh, develop uh, to close the loop. You're talking about waste collection, but I understand that this is part of the uh, entire life cycle. Yes, you have to have a broader perspective. Jakub uh, said something that I agree with, that you have the two images, the two halves, designing and the final part of uh, the packaging's life. So it's uh, back to uh, the boring subject of environmentally friendly uh, design. In order for something to be recyclable, it has to meet certain criteria because not everything is feasible at this stage or not everything is effective. If you don't design something from scratch uh, to be uh, separated uh, at the end of life, if you build something from a, a number of uh, materials, if you don't factor in the fact that the machine will not be able to do everything or a human being will not be able to do everything. Sometimes you have uh, uh, sorting by hand. Uh, so that's one thing. And the second aspect uh, related to uh, closing the loop is that it's not the end because you can collect, you can sort, but ultimately you're not doing it uh, in order to have a nice heap of waste. Uh, you want to turn the waste into a raw material and recycle this uh, uh, raw material in order to obtain a product. And that's the key. Uh, from my perspective, you need the entire loop. You can't address one uh, piece of this. Uh, uh, well, you, you need to focus on all the links in this loop. This is what's important in circular economy. All stages of uh, the life cycle uh, are intertwined. Now I'm uh, uh, turning to uh, the representative of Clariter. For your operations, the quality uh, of raw materials is particularly important. The stage of waste that we are talking about today, how does it influence your operations? And how other stages of the life cycle help you in your business operations? If you can see me, I'm pretty far away. I'd like to start by saying that as Clariter, mm. 
we are focusing on recycling. Niestety jakość połączenia jest niewystarczająco dobra. The quality of the connection is not good enough for interpreters to be able to interpret. Będziemy mieli jeszcze okazję wrócić do Pana w drugiej części naszego dzisiejszego panelu. Rzeczywiście we'll continue to discuss these issues in the course of our panel. And the new technologies show us how you can turn into practice circular economy principles. Kamil Mirowski is with us in the studio, who represents Grupa Żywiec. So let me ask the same question about waste, but also about other life cycle stages 
and how they impact the effectiveness and the quality of waste. How, how do you implement <coughs> these principles? Yes, the good question is about the state of waste, because we have returnable waste, and then we don't know what is the ultimate uh, stage where it becomes waste. For us, circularity is fundamental for our business model. In Grupa Żywiec, we have about 200 million returnable bottles, which come back to uh, the production plant six times annually, which gives us 1.2 billion bottles in circulation. For our business model, we need to have these bottles, and we cannot replace them by buying other uh, bottles, because it sometimes takes years to develop a bottle production line. That is why circularity is key for a brewer like us. Poles are fairly, fairly well acquainted with the system. Uh, for decades, the system of returning bottles has been in place, and it's quite effective, about 92% of bottles are recovered from the market. <coughs> However, the tendency for returnable bottles are negative, and uh, year on year people start picking up the single-use packaging, and uh, you can see that uh, the share of returnable bottles in the market is uh, going down steadily year after year. This is a challenge uh, for us, and uh, we are trying to work on the consumer awareness. Mm. Thanks to our program, Give a Second Life to Your Bottle, you can return the bottle in hundreds of places in Poland without having to show the receipt. But the COVID crisis has hampered our efforts. Obviously, we have also single-use packages, which is the aluminum can or, or other types of uh, packaging, where they can also be recovered, recycled. Obviously, when we talk about plastics, uh, I call them plastic, but we've just learned that we're talking about different fractions of polymers. So we are considering other opportunities. We would like to have both the glass and the can to be fully recoverable and recyclable. Obviously, the market in Poland is not yet as advanced and as mature to enable that, but uh, this certainly ties into the issue of regulations. I'm glad that you picked up the subject of consumers and different business models and what consumers expect. Consumers want to have the kinds of products which will be of high quality but also which will be easy to use. And these are the dilemmas that we grapple with in the area of circular economy. Let me come back to the panelists online. Paulina Kaczmarek from Danon, uh, which is also a representative of the food sector. And perhaps we have a similar business model there, uh, like the one demonstrated by other panelists. How do you view the waste stage in a production company? and? How does that translate into the efficient waste management? I uh, believe that Danon is a well-known food production company where packaging provides an opportunity for packaging and waste management systems. In 2018, we adopted a new packaging strategy uh, where circularity is one of the main pillars. What is this about? Well, firstly, <coughs> we're about changing 
the packaging at the design level so that in 2025, 100% of our packages can be used again, can be recycled or composted. As far as recycling is concerned, we use the Ellen MacArthur principles. We want the packaging to be recycled in practice and at, scale, at a scale. To give you some examples, we want to go through a review of packaging from the standpoint of recyclability, and uh, we are introducing a number of changes with a view to full recyclability. We want to eliminate the kinds of elements which cannot be recycled in packaging. We introduce perforation so that it is easier to get rid of the plastic cover. We also want to move to the kind of plastic packages with a higher level of recyclability. This cannot be done within a year or even a, uh, or even longer. So this is a process which is planned for a number of years. Now, as far as uh, reuse of packaging is concerned, we are observing different solutions. And for instance, in France, we are testing glass yogurt jars together with an e-commerce platform where you can order these glass jars online. In France, we, all, we are also testing a system of large containers which you unfortunately the sound is breaking up and it is not this official sound quality now it is slightly better another pillar of our strategy in order to close the loop is the introduction of plastics from recycling or plastics from plants. By 2025, we want to have a substantial share of recycled materials in all our packaging. We also introduced packages with a high level of recyclability. Winding up, in order to close the loop, we want to educate our consumers. And we are running a campaign to encourage customers so that they throw away the packaging into the proper waste container. We are also getting involved in the development of the deposit scheme. Unfortunately, the sound quality makes it impossible for proper translation. Thank you, Paulina, for picking up on these subjects and then uh, your first a statement, you mentioned that it is impossible to introduce some of these goals in a short period of time. And I want to thank you for that, because this brings us to the second question that I have to all the panelists. In what way can we create an efficient waste management system which would be circular? I want to encourage all the panelists to try and imagine the year 2030. So so in 10 years' time, let's imagine that we have another conference like this. And what sort of a regulatory framework would you expect at that time? We are ahead of the introduction to prevent of the extended producer responsibility, as well as the wreckage, uh, waste uh, the package for circular economy. These. Uh, regulatory changes will have a great impact on the Turkish industry. And I want to ask you, how do you imagine a future waste management system 
especially in terms of packaging in 10 years time. I'm dealing with uh, uh, packages for, for liquids, uh, for liquid products and uh, cartons for liquid products are, may I remind everyone, are to be thrown away into the yellow container designated for plastics. This is one of the elements of the system. But what kind of a system do you expect so that in the new vision, in the new future framework, there is a proper waste management system. So, as in the first part, let uh, us start with Jakub Tychkowski, who represents the recycling uh, company. You have the spectrum of the whole of the waste management system. How do you view these new legal changes and what do you expect in 10 years from now? Let me first share with you an interesting experience. This week, I've had some conversations with two big companies in Poland which produce packaging. The uh, managers of these companies asked us a simple question, how can we help you? A simple question, it seems, and they gave us an answer to, the, to that question. We have to offer, as they say, our consumers and the retailers we must offer them the kind of packaging which is recyclable. So they said, if they offer recyclable packaging, then the whole system of recycling will materialize. Unfortunately, I told them no, and they were surprised. Why not? As we all probably realize, when I purchase a product, I consume it and I put it in a proper waste basket. Uh, then the waste is picked up and it goes to a sorting place. In sorting places, we have a machinery which sorts the waste, but sometimes in spite of the fact that a piece of packaging is recyclable, it is constructed in a way that even proper sorting with optics sensors or even done manually with the use of the sensors we have on in our brain, even then that kind of packaging cannot be properly selected because it's too small, for instance, or because it is sandwiched within different types of uh, materials which are laminated together. So, in theory, some of these uh, packages can be recycled, but in practice we cannot really do it. And that is an example uh, that those two producers can produce recyclable um, packages, but they will never be ultimately recycled because the consumers will either put it in a wrong basket or it will be contaminated or the sorting house will not be able to properly sort it for a number of reasons and so will not end up uh, in uh, the uh, recirculation plant. Or we can recycle it, but it will be economically unfeasible. So, to put it bluntly, the new system that should close the loop of circularity should uh, assign duties to all the market participants. Today, many of those market actors uh, either don't see one another or do not have specifically designated roles. And that is the difficulty in the whole regulatory framework. 
w jaki sposób. And that is what we should address in the future. This is quite complicated. Some countries have dealt with it successful, some are not so successful. That, I believe, is the direction where the regulatory framework should develop. Now, what I believe is crucial is the role of the packaging company. These companies must cover the costs of the management of packaging, and they will be more involved if they feel that they are responsible and they will be able to enact that responsibility. However, if their role is to be merely a payer, in other words, I produce packages and therefore I need to pay some sort of due to a public body and then I don't know what happens with that money and I don't know how much I will pay in the next two to three years, then my involvement in the system will be limited. I will not very much analyze whether I produce recyclable packaging and what happens with it later. Similarly with consumers, if I as a consumer do not sort properly, then recycling will not take place. Thank you, Jakub. I believe that we are all hoping for an efficient system so that all those who participate in the marketplace are able to implement the extended producer responsibility. Now, let me come back again to Kazimierz Borkowski and ask him a question which will be similar. You have been involved for a number of years in this discussion about the waste management system, especially in the context of plastics. And how does that system look and how it, in your opinion, how it should look like in the next 10 years? Well, I have a dream, uh, we, could, we could say. I believe that the elements of this system are already quite well known to us. There's been a lot of discussion about circular economy and a number of good ideas have been generated. In 2030, I believe that we will have even more developed and mature mechanisms. To speak concretely, certainly there should be more stress on the enforcement of legislation. I believe that the new tools, for instance, for monitoring the content uh, of uh, waste should be implemented. The obligatory content principle is obviously important, but we don't believe that the top-down approach is proper. We believe that there should be more discussion involving the market actors. The responsibility for a product should uh, mean that they mean that, that they meet technical requirements and hygiene requirements. There should be more involvement in the quality of recyclable materials. And I hope that in Poland we'll be able to see an efficient system of the extended responsibility of the producer, which will include the kinds of mechanisms where the level of recycling will grow. And I hope that we will also introduce the essential requirements, uh, regulation, which 
together should translate into an increased level of recycling. We keep talking about packaging, but there are some difficult waste fractions like electronic waste or decommissioned cars. We know the policies. Increased durability of products is planned. Perhaps it will become more obligatory to have the take-back system uh, that will be more prevalent. And uh, let me say that we need a discussion and a cooperation. Uh, we should not just have separate silos. We should be able uh, to involve all the important actors in the waste sector. Now we're back to the panelists who are present here with us. Now, what is your take on packaging material recycling system for Poland in 10 years' time, given all the comments we have heard before? If I were to talk about all of it, we wouldn't have enough time, but I would love to have a holistic approach that the legislator in particular should look at it as a holistic organism that has to be treated as a whole. Extended manufacturer's responsibility is one thing, we're still waiting for it. Uh, collection systems, deposits, and other solutions as well. For example, we have the discussion about uh, incineration plants, whether we need them or not. How does that correspond to the idea of uh, circular economy? And also uh, the uh, landfilling of waste. So I would like to see the big picture. As we said before, changing one small element doesn't really change much. But to pick up on what you very aptly said, if the manufacturer of packaging comes up with packaging that is good for recycling, it won't help much if there is no interest in recycling actually happening. So we have to stimulate, on the one hand, uh, clean streams of waste, but also stimulating recycling capacity. We have to make people realize that this is a raw material that has value, and it's not just waste. So this is pretty much it. I could go on and go on. So uh, going back to our online parent panelists and Ruben Sharon, your perspective is probably wider than just uh, Poland. So what do you think are the key elements of regulations as far as waste management is concerned? And in what direction should these regulations be developed to have a proper circular economy? There are new methods of recycling that are being developed, like chemical recycling, for example, and there is a lot of interest 
We are in touch with the producers and consumers of packaging and also plastics that are not used in packaging but they are difficult to recycle and they cannot be incinerated they cannot be recycled mechanically and that's why there are these new solutions that people are coming up with chemical recycling has to be uh, defined, it has to get a definition and it has to be considered a priority. The attitude of the public is key. Not just children, but also adults have to be persuaded that waste is not just litter, it's not just garbage, but that it is a kind of raw material. These days we teach children a lot and children have this awareness but this has to also be targeted at the parents. The parents must realize that plastic is still a raw material even if it has been used two or three times already. So, in terms of enforcement, uh, it has to be stronger. There should be some penalties for those materials that are not uh, separated properly. So, you can find solutions for all of it. And new technologies give us answers. Thank you very much. And I'm very happy that you mentioned education. Without good education of the public, we won't be able to achieve our targets. Coming back to the studio, to Kamil Mirowski from Żywiec Group, if we fast forward 10 years, what do you think the waste management system should look like from the point of view of your company and your business model? Well, I wouldn't like to fast forward 10 years for three reasons. First of all, personally, I'll be 10 years older. Secondly, 10 years is three terms of parliament. It's absolutely impossible to tell what they will come up with in three terms. And finally, 10 years is a period in which hopefully a lot of our solutions for the environment will already be in place because if we don't do that then in 10 years time we'll have to be thinking about whether uh, humankind's existence uh, will be um, feasible in the first place. But I would warn you against uh, the way of thinking that legislation can solve all the problems for us. It's a reactive thing and it responds to certain phenomena. Circularity at Żywiec is linked to our business model, so it's uh, deeply rooted in making money. And that's why a returnable bottle is very important for us because it helps us lower the costs for the consumers. Now, responsibility and accountability is very important these days. Whenever we do studies, uh, it is clear that our employees care about it. For example, the beer that has not been used, uh, has not been sold, is used to produce gas to power our plants. And this uh, is very much welcomed by our employees. There are new things happening in the wider public as well. So these uh, regulations that we have been talking about have to respond to the changes in the public. And we shouldn't just come up with theoretical plans, but the regulations should instead be very practical and doable. It's not a problem to implement new regulations, but the side effects might be that the products will be more expensive, or the costs of servicing these new laws on the side of the companies 
might skyrocket. So it's important that companies can follow up on these changes and uh, be abreast of them. And just a simple example, the returnable bottle, the issue of the receipts that are obligatory due to VAT, and hopefully we could have a, a good collection system to provide pure material and to link all these elements into a single system. Well, regulation is indispensable in this discussion, but let's support the consumers in doing the right thing so that we have a practical way of implementing these regulations. Last but not least, Paulina Kaczmarek. Again, the same question, fast forward 10 years. What would you say? Can you tell us the future? What we can hope for is a clean environment, unlike what we have today. In order for that to happen, I agree with Jakub that we have to have a system for extended manufacturer's responsibility. Who is responsible for what? Uh, this is something we have to find an answer to in order for the system to work. And by 2030, hopefully all the ambitious EU targets uh, will have been reached. so that we have a proper separate waste collection scheme in place and that it works. And finally, I would like to have a deposit system, one of them, one uniform system that works for all the stakeholders. So a high level of uh, selective waste collection, and being able to recycle the raw material in the form of the collected bottles, these are the things that we care about the most. Thank you very much. Big thank you to all the panelists in the studio and the, those who joined us online. I'm very happy that we were able to show that this is a very broad spectrum. When we talk about packaging, for example, every type of packaging has its own place in the circular system. We should make our utmost, do our utmost to make sure that the system is effective and that it's meeting its targets uh, on the different stages of the life cycle as part of a circular economy model. A big thank you to all the uh, panelists.